China's natural disasters will cause 100 million people to suffer and cause economic losses of 1.5 trillion yuan. Xpeng P7 caught fire at the charging station. Crowds of protesters in Hunan's Xiangtan and Hubei's Yichang demand their rights. Over 70% of top Chinese university graduates opt for postgraduate studies amid job pressure. The CCP created a 100% fatal new coronavirus expert. The consequences will be serious. Xpeng P7 caught fire at the charging station in Japu Wumei, Pinghu, Jiaxing City, Zhejiang Province. An alarming incident unfolded as a P7 electric vehicle burst into flames during a charging session in a parking lot. The intensity of the fire reduced the vehicle to a mere skeletal frame, capturing widespread attention and dominating Baidu's trending topics on January 21st. This occurrence has reignited apprehensions surrounding the safety of electric vehicles, particularly those utilizing lithium batteries. The vehicle involved in this unfortunate event was identified as an Xpeng Motors P7 electric car. The incident unfolded at the Wumei parking lot in Japu, Pinghu, and was captured on video, revealing the ferocity of the flames and the subsequent thick billows of smoke. While the fire was successfully extinguished within approximately 10 minutes, the vehicle was left in a charred and skeletal state. Mercifully, no individuals were present inside the car during the incident, ensuring no casualties or injuries. This development has sparked a lively debate among online communities. Some netizens express a sentiment that electric cars often adopt grandiose titles like New Energy, when in reality, they argue, these vehicles might be more accurately dubbed as four-wheeled electric donkeys, given that their technological advancements may not significantly surpass their two-wheeled counterparts. Others bring attention to the recurrent nature of incidents involving Xpeng motors, with comments noting that reports of their vehicles catching fire are not unprecedented. The common denominator in these incidents is the use of lithium batteries, which, as many argue, comes with inherent risks. The complex nature of battery technology, especially the prevalence of lithium batteries in new energy vehicles, continues to contribute to charging accidents. Industry experts emphasize that one of the primary causes of these incidents is the ignition of battery packs. Manufacturing defects or the inability to entirely eliminate static electricity can lead to short circuits, arcs, and thermal runaway ultimately resulting in fires. As the prevalence of new energy vehicles rises, it is anticipated that incidents related to their safety during charging may escalate. A netizen with the username a photo shared insights, remarking that the high charging current for batteries tends to compress stored energy, increasing the likelihood of heat generation. In light of these concerns, they suggest acquiring insurance covering scenarios of spontaneous combustion and explosion. Xpeng Motors, founded in 2014 and headquartered in Guangzhou, stands as an innovative force in the electric vehicle sector, operating under the umbrella of Guangzhou Xiaopeng Motors Technology Limited Company. On July 7, 2021, Xpeng Motors achieved a significant milestone by officially listing on the main board of the Hong Kong Stock Exchange under the stock code 9868. Crowds of protesters in Hunan's Xiangtan and Hubei's Yichang demand their rights. On January 19th, homeowners in Xiangtan, Hunan and Yichang, Hubei took a stand against community issues. In Jiangtan's Jingshu Shijia West Garden community, residents opposed the installation of a high-voltage line, while simultaneously, in Yichang's Kiliksen Village Resettlement community, homeowners protested against mandatory parking fees imposed by the property management. Regrettably, law enforcement intervened in both instances, leading to the arrest of several homeowners during these demonstrations. 
Jingxiu Shijia West Garden Community in Xiangtan, Hunan, with over 300 households, became the focal point of concerns as a 56-meter-high, 220-kV high-voltage line threatened to cross through the residential area. Worried about potential risks to personal safety, health, and increased environmental noise, residents united on the morning of January 19th to initiate a collective protest. Banners displaying messages like, Oppose the high-voltage line passing through the residential area, were raised, and residents blocked traffic to impede the construction of the high-voltage line. Some homeowners even resorted to extreme measures, such as threatening to jump off buildings to express their grievances. Simultaneously in Yicheng, Hubei, specifically in Chaoting District, residents of Kilixin Village embarked on their own protest against irregular property fees on the same day. Kilixin Village, designed as a new type of urban community primarily for relocating farmers, faced controversy as the property management declared the enforcement of a monthly parking fee of 300 yuan starting from the 18th. Additionally, homeowners not paying the fee would be prohibited from driving into the community. This sudden announcement by the property management sparked dissatisfaction among homeowners. On the evening of January 19th, Residents took to the streets, blocking traffic at the community entrance in an attempt to garner societal attention. Homeowners argued that before relocation, the local government had promised to provide each homeowner with a designated parking space. Some residents expressed willingness to pay the fees, but their concerns arose when the allocation of parking spaces did not materialize after payment. Property management turned a blind eye to safety issues related to parking, allowing residents to park their vehicles haphazardly. In response, law enforcement took forceful action to evict protesting homeowners, leading to the arrest of one resident. Frustrated homeowners briefly encircled police vehicles, demanding the release of the arrested individual. As of January 20th, the protest actions by Killixen Village homeowners were still ongoing. Over 70% of graduates from prestigious Chinese universities choose to continue their postgraduate studies due to high employment pressure. Amidst China's economic challenges, the pressure on university graduates to secure employment has surged. A growing number of individuals are now opting to extend their academic pursuits, delaying their entry into the workforce. This trend is observed across various renowned Chinese universities, exemplified by Peking University, where more than 70% of graduates are choosing to pursue advanced studies to bolster their competitiveness. As reported by Yikai Finance, numerous Chinese universities have recently released comprehensive reports on teaching quality for the academic years 2022 to 2023, shedding light on the post-graduation plans of students. Among the 21 universities surveyed, the average post-graduation enrollment rate stands at a substantial 62.63%. Notably, Tsinghua University, Peking University, University of Science and Technology of China, Shanghai Jiao Tung University, University of Electronic Science and Technology, Fudan University, and Northwestern Polytechnical University boast post-graduation rates exceeding 70%. A closer examination of individual universities reveals compelling statistics. For Tsinghua University's 2023 graduates, totaling over 3,200 students, an impressive 80.8% have chosen the path of advanced studies. Similarly, Peking University witnessed 78.07% of its 3,826 graduates opting for further education as of August 31, 2023. Fudan University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and the University of Science and Technology of China reported post-graduation enrollment rates of 70.61%, 72.61%, and 75.3%, respectively. Explaining this trend, Professor Ding Chang, Associate Professor of the Economics Department at Xiamen University, notes that many desirable job positions now require a postgraduate degree. This prompts a significant number of graduates to pursue advanced studies, aiming to enhance their employability. Graduates from prestigious universities enjoy higher job placement rates and demonstrate overall stronger competitiveness in postgraduate exams. 
Additionally, the expansion of graduate programs in recent years contributes to the rising proportion of top university graduates continuing their education. Professor Ding underscores the prevalence of this trend, particularly in fields such as medicine and engineering, where there is a noteworthy increase in enrollment. This expansion is strategically aligned to cultivate talents needed for economic and social development. Furthermore, a report from the Michael Research Institute, a distinguished Chinese educational research organization, highlights that various factors, including societal demands, industry development, professional characteristics, and employment market prospects, contribute to the sustained popularity of postgraduate studies in specific disciplines, notably fields such as clinical medicine, preventive medicine, and materials science and engineering have seen a continuous rise in the proportion of university graduates opting for postgraduate studies, securing their position among the top three choices for three consecutive years. China's natural disasters will cause 100 million people to suffer and cause economic losses of 1.5 trillion yuan. The Office of the China National Commission for Disaster Reduction and the Ministry of Emergency Management reported today that in 2023, a total of 95.44 million individuals in China were affected by a range of natural disasters. These incidents resulted in 691 casualties or disappearances, the collapse of 209,000 homes, and direct economic losses amounting to approximately 54.5 billion. Furthermore, the Commission unveiled an evaluation of the country's top 10 natural disasters for 2023. Notably, three of these events were attributed to Typhoon du Suire and its impactful winds and floods in Beijing, Hebei, and the Northeast. Another significant disaster included the powerful earthquake in Gansu's Jishi Shan on December 18. As per reports from CCTV News, the predominant natural disasters in China for the year encompassed floods, typhoons, earthquakes, and geological occurrences, as well as incidents like droughts, hailstorms, freezing temperatures, snow-related disasters, sandstorms, and forest and grassland fires, each varying in intensity. The disclosed data revealed that over the course of 2023, Diverse natural disasters impacted 95.44 million people to varying extents, leading to 691 deaths or disappearances and the urgent relocation of 3.3 firm 44 million individuals. The aftermath included the collapse of 209,000 homes, with 623,000 severely damaged and 1.441 million moderately damaged. Agricultural crops were affected over an expanse of 10.5 million hectares, causing direct economic losses amounting to approximately 54.5 billion. The report highlighted specific characteristics of China's natural disasters in 2023, such as an uneven distribution across the country in terms of both time and space, with a distinct heavier in the north and lighter in the south pattern. Regions like Huabei and Dongbei experience severe rainfall, floods, and sudden geological incidents. Despite a lower frequency of typhoons, their landfall intensity resulted in multiple instances of extreme heavy rainfall. Although moderate to strong earthquakes were fewer, the impactful earthquake in Jishishan, Gansu, caused substantial losses. The CCP created a 100% fatal new coronavirus expert. The consequences will be serious. Recently, scholars from Beijing Universities and the Fifth Medical Center, affiliated with Beijing 301 Hospital, jointly published a paper claiming to have developed a 100% fatality rate variant of the novel coronavirus. The study, using a pangolin coronavirus, introduced a strain named GXP2VC7, which, when exposed to the brains of mice with ACE2 receptors, led to their death within seven to eight days of infection. Dr. Dong Yuhong, a European expert in virology and infectious diseases, expressed concern about the potential severe consequences of this virus if it were to escape from the laboratory. She emphasized the importance of ethical considerations in scientific research and cautioned against pursuing technological advancements without ethical standards. 
Over the past four years, the global impact of the COVID-19 pandemic originating from China has been devastating. Despite this, the recent publication suggests that scholars within the Chinese Communist Party system continue to engage in the creation of dangerous and lethal viruses. According to information from an individual familiar with internal data of the Chinese Ministry of Public Security, the actual death toll due to the pandemic might be concealed, given the Chinese government's consistent efforts to downplay the severity of the situation. The source indicated that China's registered population is only slightly over 1 billion. A resident of Nanjing, Jiangsu province, using the pseudonym Lingxiao, revealed that according to data from the Ministry of Public Security, the current population is around 1 billion, contradicting the official claim of 1.4 billion. Despite the Chinese Communist Party's relaxation of its extreme zero-COVID policy for a year, the return of foreign tourists to China remains slow. Data from the National Immigration Administration of the Chinese Communist Party indicates that in 2023, the number of entries and exits by foreigners recorded by the border authorities decreased by over 60% compared to pre-pandemic levels, amounting to 35 million people.